I remember running one day. This was years ago now. I lived a little bit further south. I was jogging down the Hollywood Beach boardwalk. And that particular day happened to be a struggle. I think I just underestimated the heat and, uh, you know, felt beat up on my way back. But as I was passing all these people who were walking on the boardwalk, some going to the beach, some were going to get food, everyone was kind of doing their thing. I just remember thinking how funny it was that in that, you know, that one second glance that happens between two people uh, as they pass one another, that no one I was passing knew how awful I, I felt. And they'd never know. It felt odd to me that so much hurt could be hidden in plain sight. Not that in a million years I'd want them to know or they needed to know, but it's the idea that this bridge between their world and mine would never be crossed, that my little hell was the secret the Hollywood boardwalk would keep forever. In a way, it's kind of crazy to think about. How someone can be going through their own struggle and it's never apparent to passers-by. Right? Think about that. The vast majority of chaos on planet Earth, it goes unseen. Everyone's just kind of carrying around their own uh, invisible burdens. That Hollywood boardwalk probably keeps more secrets than I can comprehend. And you know, I've talked about this before, how over time, one of my biggest mental shifts was detaching from this notion that everyone has it all figured out and I'm the one stumbling through. Everyone else jumps out of bed, you know, excited, screaming, let's go world, let's do this, right? Well, I dealt with my unease and my concerns and that's just wrong, right? Yeah, there's certainly variability in everyone's problems. We're not all the same, but everyone, everyone is climbing their own mountain. Everyone has their own cross to bear. I remember a quote from Viktor Frankl. He said, to draw an analogy, a man's suffering is similar to the behavior of a gas. If a certain quantity of gas is pumped into an empty chamber, it will fill the chamber completely and evenly, no matter how big the chamber. Thus, suffering completely fills the human soul and conscious mind, no matter whether the suffering is great or little. Therefore, the size of human suffering is absolutely relative. Eye-opening message. Relative and felt by all. See, there's two things I take from this. First, and probably the most obvious, I think it calls for us to be more compassionate to others, at least as much as we can. I've fallen short here plenty of times, we all do, but it reminds us that it should be a North Star. And two, there's a pragmatic element here, signifying that very rarely is what goes on around us about us. Very rarely is it personal. You know, because often our first instinct is to uh, assign intentionality to things that happen around us. How could this happen to me? How could they do this to me? And in truth, it's just not about you. Again, the deepest, most complex aspects of, of human beings are invisible to everyone but the person they're happening to. Everyone is to some extent, running down their own boardwalk on a hot summer day. You know, so going back to that example, let's make up a scenario. Let's say I clumsily bumped into someone, ran too close to them. They could think jerk. They could think get in your lane. They could think pay attention, have some respect, I'm walking here. But would that situation be the product of my disrespect? Or would it be the fact that I'm exhausted, that I'm hot, that I'm dehydrated and only counting steps in my head? Buildings could have been collapsing around me and I would have had no idea. 
I'm focused on making it through. See, there's value in understanding this. So much value. The world is not working against you. It's comprised of 8 billion souls with different movies playing in their heads. And you can get more from it when you understand that. You can be more valuable when you understand that. You can give yourself more grace when you understand that. People cannot see your pain and you can't see theirs. But it is a shackle being removed to take life's events less personally, less seriously even. As you create something beautiful in your own world, understand that there are no true adversaries. I remember reading in the Four Agreements a while back, and this is kind of a sloppy paraphrasing, but people don't do things because of you. They do things because of themselves. And so as you run your race, as you make your way into the world, understand that everything around you is assigned value by you. And those passers-by aren't for or against you. They are in the midst of various personal journeys, trying to run their own races, as are you. Look, the sun is hot. That humidity can be suffocating. The path laid out before you is long. These are tough obstacles that you have to overcome, that we all have to overcome. And in time, you will. But don't create additional adversaries that do not exist. Don't imprison yourself with stories that don't hold up. It's not all about you. And understanding that, as it turns out, can be what makes all the difference. We are the stories we tell ourselves. I used to tell the maybe someday story until I saw the value contained in the why not today story. I was a main character in the how do I not mess things up story until I pushed my way into the how about capturing life's upside story. I believed wholeheartedly in the what will my friends, acquaintances, people I used to know think of me story before I felt the freedom of the you don't live life for them, you live life for you story. My scarcity story preceded my abundance story. My bowing before the odds story preceded my simply do not stop story. My you don't deserve them story preceded my if you're not a net positive on my life, I don't want you around story. My maybe I can be that impact add that much value, make that much money, have that much fun story, preceded my, I'm going to do all those things. Now how do I arrange these pieces to support my mission story? As I've grown and learned and changed, so of the stories that I've told myself, and I can look back and always draw a direct line from the stories I was telling and the life I was living. We get in life what we allow, and our narratives, our stories, happen to be the gatekeepers. If you want to change the situation, change the story, right? If you're telling yourself the world is against you, you'll live like the world is against you. If you're telling yourself the world is conspiring to help you live your best, 
you'll find the opportunity where you otherwise would. And you'll find it not through magic, but because you're looking for it. It's that simple. We don't look for things that go against our narratives. We don't seek things out that we don't believe exist. Those internal stories prompt our action, and our action changes our reality. Since finding this a few weeks ago, it's become one of my favorite ideas. Alan Watts, speaking to a classroom of students, he says, when a flag is flapping in the wind, is it the wind or the flag that moves? Neither. It is the mind that moves. Our minds are moving, they are internalizing and painting the portrait that becomes our reality. If you don't like the reality you're seeing, Guess what? It's not the world. It's how you're viewing the world. It's what you're doing about your world. And I understand how hard it can get. How we all oscillate between periods of struggle and contentment. How low the lows can feel. I get it. But the truth is the wrong stories will simply keep you down, hold you there. They'll ensure blinders stay on as life rotates around you and the opportunity dissipates. We are the stories we tell ourselves. And that's beautiful news because it means the reflection in the mirror holds the key to transformation. Life can give you the details, the context, but it can't write the script. That, my friend, is all you. It's impossible to know how this story ends. I don't think we're expected to, nor do we need to. But we do need to be willing to light up the 10 feet in front of us. We need to be willing to illuminate the now. It's how little nothings transition into those very meaningful somethings. One illuminated piece of the puzzle at a time. They say that complexity is the enemy of progress. Things seem too big, too far away, when all the world appears dark. We pause. We become crippled by how much we don't know. We hide in the shadows of life's unknown. But I have, and hopefully will until my final days, hold on to the idea that we have within us enough light just enough light to brighten up the path before us, directly in front of us. It's always been just enough to get through anything. When the world is dark, you can't see the hand in front of your face, it will always be true that you possess the ability to cut through that darkness, to highlight the next stepping stone. There's just enough light to collect the data and information sufficient to make one more logical decision. One more. To take one shaky and uncertain step, it's amazing what they become over time. See, I've spent some time in that metaphorical darkness. I've also been in the light. I've believed, I've had all the answers and been brutally humbled by life. There have also been times where I bet on myself when the odds were small and emerged victorious, whether up, down, high or low, the saving grace was remembering that if I turned the light on, the headlamp initiating from my eyes and projecting out into the world, it would always provide enough for me to do perhaps the most important thing I'm capable of doing, moving forward. 
There's no skipping in life, no jumping races to arrive at any particular finish line. But there is always enough to carry on. This realization has been interesting to me. Our struggle when it emerges is usually not derived from an inability to do the right thing. It's not like we're missing something. No, our struggle comes from thinking we need more than we do. It's frustration that our goals are so big and so far away and so out of reach. We lose sight of what we can control, blinded by a standard that no human can live up to. Stop beating yourself up for not being a god. No mere mortal ever leapt a mountain. Everything is not the goal. One thing is the goal, and you are capable of one thing. Everyone is capable of one thing, one little action to initiate momentum and push you further into that unknown. But where, you might wonder, I need to know where. To which I say, breathe. Because the wares make themselves known when you're in motion. As you move forward, the wrong destinations prompt you to learn and then self-correct. And the right ones inspire you to push further in their direction. Both valuable, right? The only way to lose is not go. The only way to lose is to say, because I don't have it all figured out, I'll remain right here. Like a toddler refusing to put a puzzle together because he can't see the completed mural in each individual piece. The whole point is to put it together. The fun is to put it together. The growth and the value is in putting it together. And I get it, we want to know, right? Humans want to know, that's why evolving is hard. We have to be okay with not knowing. And that's what life is about, formulating your hypothesis and then letting the data derived from your progress alter your approach. That data is not gifted to you while you stand stagnant. So the question is, will you sign that dotted line? The one that says, when you can't see the mountaintop, what you will be left with is solely trust in yourself that you can bring it about. It's easy to say yes when the sky is blue and the birds are singing. But amidst the storms, when your mind begins to whisper that perhaps it will never end, when it begins to ask you if there was ever even a point, after all, look around, there's nothing but gray. That is when you have to remember the rules of the game. That's when you have to remind yourself it's not about knowing, it's about trusting, about creating puzzle pieces, not finishing murals. Anyone can create just one puzzle piece, and then just one more, and just one more. Because yes, it's difficult, as is life, but you'll remember why as you move into the storm and watch all those little pieces connect around you. Remember what's yours to control and what's not, what must be let go. Remember that nothing is so futile as attempting to move the immovable or change the unchangeable. Remember that your greatest strength is focusing your time, talents, and efforts, exhausting your energy on that which you can control. And sometimes this distinction hurts. But to fail to see it is to shackle oneself to delusion, right? You can complain about the weather all day, but to complain about it, to focus on it, to be stuck in it is not going to change it. 
your time would be better suited looking at how to adjust yourself to it. And that's what life repeatedly tells us. There's plenty we aren't happy about, plenty we wish we could change. But to stay there in that space is to forfeit your greatness, your strength. Why? Because there is so much you can control, so much you can do. You can always position yourself to succeed. But that calls for first separating what's yours and what's not. Right? There are people I wish were different. There are situations I prayed were alterable. There are outcomes that are given without my asking. That's just life. And a losing mentality is to fight that, to feel anger or resentment at the people that let you down. Why couldn't they be how I want them to be? It's to dwell on the situation that occurred despite your wishes. Why couldn't it have just happened my way? It's to refuse to acknowledge the outcomes that have already materialized. And why couldn't it just have evolved differently? All that, as hard as it is to see, is embracing a mentality of victimhood. It's walking down a path that has no desirable destination in store for you. When you accept the unchangeable, you then become the architect of your reality. Sure, people, places, and outcomes uh, weren't always the best, but now you ask, how can I navigate around it, or better yet, use it to my advantage? It is, to use the famous metaphor, not shaking your fist at the wind, but building sails for your boat, creating a path to take you somewhere new. So let the energy, the time, and emotion that's wasted on the immovable dissolve. The question worth asking is, where do you most want to be and how can you get there? And while those details outside the scope of your control can feel like a bottomless gap in your way, I promise that what's around you is enough to build a bridge over it. There's enough there for you to find your way. So long as we learn to separate the gap from the bridge, the details from the solutions, when all you see is why you can't go, or how it can't be solved, or how impossible something is. It's not that you are looking at an unfortunate truth, it's that you are looking at the wrong supporting evidence. When we stop seeing the details and outside circumstances as the deciders of fate, we win. When we place our eyes upon the controllable, when we step into what is ours to move and shape and transform, we finally see that the journey to something bigger is not only possible, it is inevitable. The road to this moment wasn't an easy one. There were times where you thought you knew, but simply didn't. There were plans made that drastically differed from the ones fate had prepared. There were days that made you question yourself, your beliefs that made you ask, what is my purpose? Look, to live is to have felt these things, asked these questions, to have seen firsthand the discrepancy between what we draw up and how life unfolds. And I think about this discrepancy often. The swings and misses, they hurt. 
You know, that quick shiver you feel down your spine when thinking about the wrong turns made. The tugging at your heartstrings when reflecting back on things said, or perhaps worse, left unsaid. It's easy to get lost in that feedback loop, letting the past dictate the present, letting yesterday define today. But here's what I've come to see as the truth. To experience the things that make life beautiful, we have to be vulnerable in a way we otherwise wouldn't. Open ourselves up to an unknown that, you know, we could have skipped altogether if we really wanted to. All that pain, all that hurt the past provided could very easily be the reason you shut down, the reason you play small. That hell you walked through could be your justification for never stepping out into the chaos of life again. That would, at first glance, appear to make sense. Seem ideal, even. But that pain could also be the reason you look around you and say, after all that, after experiencing everything life threw at me, I'm still here. And as I stand here now, I'm looking out at an array of possibility that is infinite. I'm equipped with an understanding and a worldview that was once foreign to me. I'm armed with a perspective that has changed my life for the better. By stepping out into the often dangerous, brutal, unforgiving world, I have elevated myself. And that has made all the difference. And while it may feel intuitive to run from a reiteration of yesterday's pain, it's wisdom that urges us to instead use that pain as a multiplier. The key to something more, something miraculous. Not to cower because we once endured it, but to stand tall because we overcame it. And that's what we often miss. We can think back to the adversity, sure. But we're often unable to see how that adversity shaped us. Our own strength, it's never gonna scream out at us. It's never gonna let us know it's there. We have to take the time to acknowledge its presence. We have to peer over our shoulders to see how far we've traveled. We'll always have obstacles before us, but if we don't stop and assess, we won't see that the obstacles have gotten bigger. Not because life's gotten harder, but because our own evolution has permitted us to step into bigger arenas. It has equipped us to take on larger adversaries. A simple willingness to be vulnerable has become the flame that lit up your soul. So the question is, will you step out? Will you see that vulnerability not as a crack in the foundation or a chink in the armor, but as strength. To love, it requires accepting a susceptibility to being hurt. To play the game requires an acceptance that you just might come up short. To bet on yourself means understanding that you might fall right on your face. To want more than you have now means acknowledging that you might be humbled along the way. This is what it means to live. 
giving a piece of yourself in order to acquire that which means the most. The torturous, often counterintuitive willingness to step out into the darkness of night when your heart races and your mind moves a million miles a minute. That's vulnerable. That is power. And it's an investment in a tomorrow that otherwise would not have been available to you. You are not your past. You are the wisdom derived from its lessons. The courage removed from its trials. And the hurt, that hurt that was perhaps at one point the only thing you felt. It's not your reason to shrink into yourself. It's your reason to step back out. To say to the universe, I have the strength to again dance with the unknown. To risk the short-term discomforts that life often hands out like candy in exchange for the chance years from now to look at your reflection and say, I got back up. I did the hard thing. I followed my heart. I wandered into that darkness to obtain the wondrous reality that is, for a time concealed, I did that. So love again. Grow again. Try again. Build again. Believe again. See again. Feel again, step out into the world again. This is who you are. Underneath the fear and insecurity, underneath all those reasons to not go, there lives the beginning of the miracle that is life. And it won't be easy. The timing will never feel perfect, but the question will always exist. It will always exist within an arm's reach of where you stand. Can you be that vulnerable? Can you be that courageous? And not just when things are going well, but amidst the turmoil, the chaos, the self-doubt, when your memory only wants to play highlight reels of where things went wrong, where you swung and missed, will you choose to see those moments not as the chains that confine you, but as the strength that elevates you? Will you be vulnerable enough to give away some of you in order to expand and transform all of you?